Hi everyone, this is Krishna Vandanapu, a business applications MVP and Microsoft certified trainer. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, we will learn how to create a table in Excel dynamically without specifying the range of the column and row and populate the data from Excel to SharePoint list. If you are visiting for the first time, this is the best time to subscribe to my channel to get all future notifications. I logged on to Power Automate Maker Portal. Our intention is to copy the email attachments to SharePoint document library. Power Automate provides hundreds of default templates with which we can create flow within no time. In this case, I'm searching for a template copying email attachments to SharePoint. I said email attachments to SharePoint and say enter. In this case, I'm selecting the first template which is save email attachments to SharePoint library and send a notification on mobile once the flow executed successfully. Click on that template. While you're creating the flow using that template, it lists out all the connectors part of that flow. In this case, I have one SharePoint connector and Office 365 connector, whereas notification is a simple action. Now I'll go ahead and click on continue. The time I say click on continue, it immediately created my flow without any effort from Maker. If we examine the flow, it is listening to my inbox and receiving all the attachments for each and every email. And then it also provides one filter. If I want to filter this email from a specific group or if I don't want to add any filter, we can leave it as false. Once you leave that as it is, it comes onto no branch and then it will create the document from the attachments in the SharePoint document library and sends the notification. In this scenario, we are not focusing on filters on top of receiver. So I am dragging this action right above this filter action, also the notification action as well. Now I'll go ahead and delete all these actions which are not really needed for this use case. When we examine the flow, it is very straightforward. It is listening to my inbox and adding all the attachments to a document library and then send the notification. Now I need to provide my SharePoint document library where I want to copy these attachments to the document library name, which is email attachments. I renamed my flow as create a table inside Microsoft Excel dynamically using flow. Go ahead and save. Now let us test my flow is able to copy the attachments to document library or not. Once it is copying, then we will implement the table formatting action. For that, I have two reports ready. These reports are absolutely a random data from web. The first Excel is with small set, wherein I have only 200 records. Once we implement the flow, we will test the same flow with the larger set which has around 3000 records in this report. Now I will send this small set Excel as an attachment to myself and then we will examine the flow action. I'm attaching the small set and then I'm sending this to myself. So the expected behavior is flow should listen my inbox and read this email attachment and put it in my email attachment document library. Let's refresh this. The flow ran successfully. And now if we examine the actions inside the flow, it read all the email attachments and created the files respectively in the document library. When I click on Excel in the document library, the file is rendering properly. Now let's go ahead and add the next step, creating the table for that data. Click on add new action, select Excel online business, Select the action create table. Now the location is my SharePoint site and the document library is email attachments and the file is which is newly created. Select the ID which we have created just now and the table range. This is where we need to understand A1 notation. What does that mean A1 notation is when we look at Excel, this the cell which is we have segment is A1. Here we, we can see what is the cell notation. When I select here, it shows D1. It is column D cell 1. When I select this, 
United States of America, which is showing B7. The first element is showing what is the name of the column and followed by the row number. If we want to create a table in Excel, what we have to do, we create by clicking on insert and say table. Even here also, we need to specify the range from where to where we want to create the table. Stating that A dollar one means that first cell of the Excel sheet to column P, which is this column and a 201. This will convert all the data existed in the table. The same way we need to represent the table range even in Power Automate also. However, what we can do is we can convert the entire Excel into a table by specifying dollar one colon dollar one zero four eight five seven six, which means one million forty eight thousand five hundred and seventy six. This is the maximum capacity of an Excel file. So what I'm doing, I'm going to create the table on the entire Excel. Then last parameter we need to specify is what is the name of the table I want to give. If I don't specify the table name, it will create the table name randomly. So here I'm specifying my table name as sample. So I have specified all the parameters. Now let's go ahead and save the flow first. And then I'm going to execute my flow with the recently success scenario. The flow got executed successfully. Go to the document library, give a refresh. Click on the Excel file, but this time the Excel file is fully formatted with the table and it created the column names as a random column names, which is column 16,368 because there are no columns after my column P. So Power Automate will create the columns randomly from column 1 to column 16,000 as well. When we look at the rows, 1,048,576th row is also part of my table inside the Excel. Now that my Excel is completely formatted, I will go ahead and write another flow to read this Excel to populate the data into SharePoint list. But this time I'm going to create a SharePoint document library listener so that as and when a new file get create in library, it automatically initiate my flow. I have named my flow as copy Excel data to SP list. And this one I want to trigger as and when a file is created. A file is created in a folder in SharePoint. Click on create. Now I need to specify what is my SharePoint site followed by what is my document library name which is email templates so as and when a new document create it has to execute the next step is we need to read the data from table in order to do that select excel online business again list rows present in a table select this and then provide my sharepoint site document name which is I'm going to say as file name, which is coming from my event receiver and the table name. I know the table name is always my table name is sample. So I'll say sample, say OK. Now let us go ahead and send the email one more time and see what is the output we will see as part of both the flows. The first flow is to copy the attachment and second flow is to read the data inside the table. I'm sending the email one more time with the same data set. The first flow to copy the email attachment has initiated and it is executing now. Once it is executed, it will create the file in document library. Okay, the flow got executed. And when I go here, my file is very much created in my document library. And now this flow also got executed successfully. Now what is left is read the data from this table and populate it into a SharePoint list. We know that our table will come with the blank data, right? So to understand how many rows we are getting, I'm adding a compose length of 
my output so this will show me how many rows i am able to read out of this table the flow got executed and if i see i am getting only 256 which means i need to enable the pagination at this action select the ellipsis icon click on settings enable pagination and i'm going to say 100k because if i specify more than 100k it shows me throttling limit so maximum pagination i can give is 100k so i'm going to give 100k as my pagination and say done now if i execute my flow for the same this time it will read 100k records which will take more time than it executed in the last occurrence the flow executed successfully after 17 minutes but if you see the length of the output on this action is more than 100k records the reason behind that is we have not added any filter on this action let's go ahead and add filter as part of this action which is part of filter query in my report segment is my primary key and i know that a primary key will never be a blank i'm going to add the filter query as segment not equal to null filter all the rows where segment is not equal to null this time if i execute the flow the flow will fetch only the rows where my segment is not blank let me go ahead and execute one more time and we will examine the output now if you see the same flow got executed in just in 20 seconds and also i got the accurate number of only 200 rows because my excel has only 200 rows if i run the same flows with a larger data set for 60,000 records now i'm going to send an email with large set and see how it will behave i'm selecting my large set which is more than 5 mb file now i'm sending this report and see the output from both the flows the first flow to copy the attachments to document library got executed successfully in 41 seconds and when i go to document library i can see the document and the second flow also got initiated since we have the data of 60000 rows in my report it will take a quality amount of time to pass through the data while excel data parsing flow is executing i want to say one important point here is using this range i am converting my entire excel sheet into a table and power automate will create dummy columns as column 1 column 2 column 3 column 4 if you don't want to see that kind of dummy column you can always provide a range in format as a1 and say a a meaning that it will create 27 columns which is a is represented as 26 columns and another a means 27th column in excel and you can specify a range of 100k records so this time what power automate will do is it will create a table in excel from cell 1 to 26 column with 100k records this is the way i can avoid the default dummy columns if we are okay to see the dummy columns but want to convert the table dynamically you can always specify the range as cell 1 to last row number so this will create the entire sheet into a table after 48 minutes of execution time the flow got failed with the error message as the action list rows present in a table has an aggregated page result size of more than 200 mb which is this many number of bytes this exceeds 200 mb which is the default size of a power automate limitation so what my advice is don't create the entire sheet as a table rather you specify the desired range while creating the table being said that i'm going to specify my range as a1 to a a which is 26 columns and just 100k records now if i run this flow on the 
larger data set, it will create the Excel with only 100K records. And if I run against that, it will parse the data. Now we need to iterate through the result set and push the data to SharePoint list. The first action is we need to add the loop to iterate through the result set, which is apply for age and select the value list of items coming out of this action. After that, select SharePoint, create item action, provide the SharePoint site URL followed by the list where I want to populate my data. Here, we need to specify each and every column. When you see here, it doesn't show the columns inside that Excel table. What we have to do is we have to write the formula. The output of that table is a JSON. Now the current item followed by the column segment. Segment is mapped onto title column and accordingly all the other columns. I went ahead and mapped all the columns accordingly as per my data source. If I execute this flow against my Excel sheet, it will populate all the data back to my data source. Coming back to my first flow where it is copying the data source, I have given this range only to ensure my file size is not exceeding. If you think that your data source is less, there is no need to restrict your columns to only 26. You can leave the full sheet as a data table. In my case, I don't want to see the exceeded file limit. I am specifying my table range. Now, if I go ahead and execute this to copy the file and copy the data with a shorter data set, I have triggered the email. Email got arrived. Now the first flow got successfully executed and the file got created in the document library. Now the second flow to read the data from the Excel table and copy to SharePoint list also initiated and copying the data to SharePoint list. Now if I go to SharePoint list, I already start seeing the data as part of my SharePoint list because the flow is populating the data into SharePoint list as and when a new item comes in that iteration. The flow executed in two minutes and when you examine the output of this action is 200 rows because our smaller data set has only 200 records and flow also iterated the loop for only 200 records. But when you go and see the Excel in the document library, the table created with more than 200 rows. All these rows were also created but there is no data which means my flow is iterating only for the data where my primary key has value. That is how I can convert a non-formatted Excel to a table and read the data from Excel table and populate into SharePoint list. I hope you enjoyed learning how to create table dynamically in an Excel using Power Automate. If you like the video, hit like and add your comments. I'm highly available in Twitter and LinkedIn. Reach out to me if you have any questions. Thank you. Have a nice day.